Hello everyone, my name is Elena, aka Minty Mito, and if you're new here, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back to my channel where I do fun art challenges and talk about whatever's on my mind. I've been gone for like a month, we're just gonna skip right on past that. And today we have the seventh installment of my Drawing Your Sonic OCs series, so if you'd like to see the other videos in this series, I do have a playlist of all of them on my channel, so you're welcome to go binge all of them if you enjoy this one. If you are interested in submitting your Sonic OC for the small chance to have your OC drawn by me in a future video, you may fill out the submission form which I will have linked in the description. So let's get into it. So our first OC of the day is Kinta Blue the Timberwolf submitted by Dixie. And Kinta has the ability of concealment, durability, super strength, and super speed, although only half the speed of Shadow or Sonic. And in her super form, she has the power of Atmokinesis, otherwise known as weather manipulation. Dixie hasn't fully decided on Kinta's backstory, but like Shadow, she has a tragic past where she unfortunately lost her mother in a really tragic way. She's very quiet, timid, and introverted, and comes across similar to Blaze, Knuckles, and Shadow due to her stoic expression and slight anger issues, but her true nature is actually the opposite. Once you get to know her, she's extremely generous and sweet. She's from the South and has the charm of a caring Southern mom. She's also shy and a bit of a pushover, finding it hard to say no to others. Kinta Kinta also somehow has a connection to the Master Emerald and is quite tech savvy while also being street smart. As for their relationships, Kinta is very close friends with Shadow and they hang out together due to their similar background and similar behavior. Kinta also helps Tails with his tech whenever he needs it and considers Vanilla and Cream to be their family, seeing Vanilla as a bit of a mother figure. When joining forces with Sonic and his friends, she eventually met Scourge and later on they became lovers. And for those of you who don't know who Scourge is, he's like the evil Sonic in the Archie Comics universe, so I think that's kind of funny. Seems like Kinta is very much more on the hero side and yet she ends up in a romantic relationship with evil Sonic so that's very interesting. I really like Kinta's design. I think she looks so cool. I had a lot of fun drawing their hair and I also really like your art style Dixie. I think you did an amazing job capturing this OC. I really like her color palette. It's very cool and I feel like it suits Kinta's personality. I will say one note for this batch of OCs. I wasn't attempting anything new style wise I don't think. At least not actively like I have have been for the past few videos. I thought it'd be nice to just go with what's coming naturally to me at this point after drawing so many OCs and seeing what happens, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Something you may notice with all the OCs this round though is that I redid the line art. Originally for all of them I had thicker line art out of habit and then I remembered that I've been wanting to go a more thin and textured line art style with these OCs so if you're seeing me redraw the line art that's what's happening. Thank you so much Dixie for your submission. I really like your art style. It is so crisp and lovely and I hope that you like my version of your OC Kinta. Our next OC is Agony the Thylacine, submitted by Star, and for those of you who don't know, and I didn't know this either, a thylacine is an extinct animal species, and for those of you who have been following me, you know that I love drawing a unique animal species for the OCs on this series. I just think it's so fun, an opportunity to do something different. It's one of my favorite things about doing this series is getting to draw unique sonic species. But anyways, Agony's weapon is a scythe, although Star has not drawn it yet, so there was not a reference for it, so I decided not to include the scythe in my drawing. However, he does have an ability called Umbrakinesis, which is the power to manipulate darkness. He can come out of the shadows and form darkness into certain objects like, say, a giant hand that can grab you. He also has night vision, and the circles on his palms can emit fog. He doesn't use this ability that much, but does use it to temporarily blind others if needed. Agony was never a living being and has never had any family. He was created from darkness and has learned to make that darkness his own. He never smiles or even looks angry, his face is a blank expression all the time because he honestly lacks the will to feel anything, he's a merciless villain. He's also 2,000 years old and does not work alone. Like other Sonic characters, he's part of a team with two other characters and he works with a coyote named Pandora and a bat named Anzai. For those of you who are good at coming up with names, Star did say that she is looking for bad guy team name suggestions. Um, she's been calling them the Supreme Baddies as a joke, but if you have anything better or if you really like Supreme Baddies, feel free to put that in the comments down below. And I really fell in love with this OC's overall vibe. He's very scary, so I had a lot of fun capturing his powers and his dark demeanor. I really liked the idea of 
this foggy, shadowy hand that he can use to grab people, so I wanted to include that in the drawing. I also think that his design is really distinct and unique. I really, once again, love that you went with an extinct animal. I think that's a really cool choice. And I am so happy with how this one turned out. The entire process was super fun for me, so thank you, Star, for your submission. Your character design and concept is so cool, and I loved drawing Agony, so I hope that you like how he turned out. All right, our next OC is Dusty the Labrador Dog, submitted by Rob. And first of all, Rob, I love this whole character sheet that you made. It's really cool, and it was very helpful during the drawing process, so thank you. So Dusty has the power of electrokinesis slash energy amplification. He can shoot electricity, make whip-like strands of energy, and he has a bit of a speed increase, and he can hover slightly off the ground sometimes, but all of this drains his energy pretty quickly. And according to Rob, he did make a story for Dusty in the Sonic world, but he liked the character and design so much that he's currently working on an original story and hopes to someday turn it into a game or cartoon, which is awesome. I love that. As far as his story in the Sonic world goes, Dusty and his sister were taking refuge in a junkyard during the War with Infinite, which is an event that occurs in the game Sonic Forces. A couple months after the war, a Chow came into the junkyard along with a whole lot of trouble. The Chow was actually a spy for an underground organization called Chow Team 6 and had recently stolen a prototype weapon from a terrorist group. This weapon would allow normal Mobians to harness chaos energy. And naturally, the terrorist group went after the Chow spy in a battle between them, CT6, and the remaining resistance members occurs with Dusty and his sister caught right in the middle of it. Dusty eventually meets with Team Chaotix and Vector becomes a mentor to him, helping him train and use his powers to the fullest. Now, I won't lie, this was a challenging one for me. I don't think I've ever drawn a dog OC before, or if I have, it's been a really long time. For me, something about the ears was so hard for me to draw, and I was also really struggling to get a pose down. I love electricity-powered characters, though. I just never know how to pose them, so that was tough, but I knew I wanted to have him using the whip-like strands that you mentioned in his description, and I think it all came together in the end. Also, Rob, I definitely relate to the notion of making a Sonic OC and then being inspired to make your own original concept based on that. I have done that before, so I wish you luck on your story, and I hope that you have a lot of fun with the process because I think that's awesome. I love how being in a fandom can inspire us to develop our own creative voices. Thank you so much for your submission, Rob. I hope you like my rendition of Dusty the Dog. Our next OC is Bear Trap the Grizzly, submitted by Anna. And Bear Trap has the ability of crystal manipulation with the help of small carnelian gemstones placed on each of their fingertips. Using these gems, they can create a finger gun, make spikes appear from the ground, or make any object of their choice in a crystallized form. Anna created Bear Trap around 2021 2022, and the original idea was for Bear Trap to be Infinite's love interest. And Infinite is the main villain in Sonic Forces. There's a lot of Sonic Forces in this video. So Bear Trap was born deep in the Mystic caves in the Mystic Cave Zone. One day, as a child, they got lost and suddenly saw a strange dim red glow in the caves. Out of curiosity, they followed it until they found ten pieces of carnelian crystals laid on the ground in a circle. Recalling a legend about them, Bear Trap placed a crystal on each fingertip, thinking that maybe one day they could come in handy. One day, in their teens, they got into a really bad fight, which caused the carnelian gems to activate. The opponent freaked out as Bear Trap's body started to crystallize from the amount of power they were using, and the opponent ran away frightened leaving Bear Trap crystallized for a span of 100 to 200 years. When Eggman and Infinite teamed up during Sonic Forces, Infinite's Phantom Ruby had a reaction to the Carnelian Gems, causing the crystallized Bear Trap to shatter and come back from the dead. Bear Trap would then escape the caves and go explore, spying on Infinite, who they refer to as the Metalhead Fella. One afternoon, Bear Trap was standing on top of an abandoned building when Infinite snuck up on them, but to Infinite's surprise, Bear Trap wasn't afraid, which made Infinite become interested in them, and they ended up getting along really well. So firstly, Anna, I have to say I think your art style is super fun. I love the idea of these crystallization powers that Bear Trap has, and I think it's funny that they were drawn to Infinite. I like the idea of them being a couple, and I felt really inspired while working on this because I just love their design and the whole concept so much. It was so fun to do, so thank you for your submission, Anna. I hope you like how my version of Bear Trap turned out. Our last OC for today is Truffy the Fennec Fox, submitted by Ash. And Truffy doesn't really have 
powers, he's just a normal silly guy, but he does have really good hearing thanks to his large ears. Truffy is a character that Ash made out of pure boredom and actually he was originally designed to be a cat. He is a silly, cliche little guy, he hangs out with Sonic and friends and is basically like a comic relief character. He has a good friendship with Espio and absolutely loves juice boxes, so I definitely wanted to include that in the drawing. Truffy's a bit strange, kind of dumb, sarcastic, but he can also be pretty rational. He's also a really big scaredy cat and he's extremely terrified of Shadow. He'd rather not put himself in danger, but he can be helpful-ish to the Sonic team if needed. Basically, he's a background character that nobody really cares about as much as the rest of the Sonic team. Whenever the Sonic characters are in the news for saving the world, he's always just cut off of the page or TV screen so people never go up to him in public. And this is funny, it made me think of the recurring gag in Monsters, Inc. where Mike Wazowski is always cut off, but anyways. The others often feel the need to babysit him because they pity him. Harsh, but that's how Ash describes it. Tails, despite being much younger than Truffy, mostly has his back, always correcting him or just trying to keep him out of any trouble. Over time though, Truffy does end up growing a bit insecure because he doesn't feel like he's part of the team and instead he feels like a nuisance to everyone around him. Can't blame him. He starts to envy the others, most importantly Sonic, because he's tired of being the background character and he wants to be more. So one day, he decides that he'll become a villain. Ish. But he goes about it horribly and the Sonic team does not take him seriously whatsoever. Later on, as one of his evil plans fail, he ends up in the middle of nowhere, salty that his own plan backfired. He then finds a strange cave with a glowing green light, and he discovers its source, a strange green crystal. He feels hypnotized by the crystal and touches it, but is immediately knocked out by green electricity. However, he awakens with new powers, electricity shooting out of his hand, super intelligence, and a bit of insanity. With all that power, he could finally be seen, be an actual challenge to Sonic, be better than him. So from that point on, he becomes a cocky, overconfident villain. Ash says that he likes to think of the rock version of Shiny from Moana on Spotify when it comes to Truffy's villain era. And the last note that Ash included, which made me cackle, was that Truffy claims to be a ladies man but is very much a closeted gay loser. <laughs> Ash, I do want to say that I think your drawing style is adorable and I absolutely love it. You guys are so talented. I love seeing all the variety of art styles in the fandom. This is so cool. And I love your sense of humor. Your submission was cracking me up. I love how silly this OC is and I'd love to see a character like Truffy in the Sonic games. I think he would add so much fun to the group dynamic. And I also like that despite him not really being that important to most people's lives that he is friends with Espio. That sounds like a fun and unexpected matchup. I had a great time drawing him but I did struggle on the pose and getting the ears to a point that I was happy with but I think it all came together in the end and I really wanted to focus on making him look silly and goofy. The villain era sounded fun too but I like this more cute and casual vibe that he has. Thank you so much, Ash, for your submission. I had an amazing time drawing Truffy and reading about him, and so I hope that you like how my drawing turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I know I keep not uploading as much as I want to, and it's tough. It really is, and that's all I'll say about it, but I am gonna give it my all and try to believe in myself and my art and this channel more, so... Wish me luck. I am so grateful that you're here. It means the world to me. Anyways, all my important links are in the description, including the Sonic OC submission form if you'd like the small chance to have your OC featured in a future installment of this series. And if you'd like to go the extra mile to support me, I do have a Ko-fi page where you can tip or commission me. Either is very much appreciated. And I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!